Welcome to the Tesla of the sea. This boat cruises 20 hours on battery power. It knows when you fall overboard, it won't go beyond geofences that you set up. It offers autopilot and goes 35 knots or 65 kilometers an hour flat out. It offers a modular design and will save you $800 every time you fuel up. In this episode of Tech First, we're chatting with the CEO of Xshore, which has just released the Elex 8000 electric boat and raised $17 million to bring it to a harbor near you. Jenny, let's start here. What does it feel like to drive an electric boat? Well, honestly, it's an amazing experience. Have you ever driven a Tesla? I have not driven a Tesla. I own a Nissan Leaf. Uh, I okay. love a Tesla. I, it's on my list, but I um, uh, haven't yet. No. So when you drive an electric car in general, you will experience this incredible acceleration that you're not yes. used to from a sort of normal combustion engine car, combustion engine boat. And the same experience you get here. So basically you have an amazing torque, you know, just going full throttle, the acceleration just, you know, in a car, you get pushed back into your seat and in the, in the boat, it's kind of the same feeling. You basically need to decide where to have your eyes open or closed because you can't <laughs> change that when you're going full throttle. Uh, so from a sort of fun acceleration perspective, it's amazing. And then I think if you look at electrical vehicles, I mean, you don't, you're not bothered by the fumes because those are on the outside of the car and also the noise. So, I mean, having an electric boat is much more um, extreme experience from that perspective because you don't get any fumes that you otherwise would get right up your face and you don't have any noise. So you can talk to someone else even if you go at full speed. So the only thing you hear is water and wind. And if you go at lower speed, you know, it's absolutely silent. So it's just an amazing experience. That must be amazing. And I look forward to testing it out and trying it one of these days. Uh, because I mean, of course, the, my experience of driving, uh, piloting a powerboat or being on one is it's noisy as hell. <laughs> it's really loud. It's extremely loud. It's fun. It's exhilarating. But you can't do half an hour of that or an hour of that. And, and you, you need, it's too much, right? Yeah. So normally you tap someone's shoulder to have them turn off the engine so you can talk. And, and here you can go full throttle and still have a conversation. I mean, it's great. Yes. So talk to me about the boat a little bit. Obviously, it has electric propulsion, but it's not the only thing you changed. You did a lot that's different and unique about this boat. Tell me about everything. So basically what we're trying to do is, of course, to drive the transformation that you've seen in the automotive industry from combustion engine cars to electric cars. We're trying to drive that in the marine segment. And, and we believe that in order for people to change, the product needs to be better. It needs to be a better user experience. You won't change just because it's more environmental friendly or something like that. And we also believe that people would still, if you want to go fast in a boat, you still want to go fast. And most electric boats can only go five to 12 knots. I mean, 50 knots is pretty fast for a normal electric boat. So for us, we've tried to uh, create a boat which can, um, you can play along with your friends like wakeboarding, uh, go water skiing, what have you at, you know, um, higher speeds for like a couple of hours. And then if you go at slower speeds, you can go for 20 hours and just be out in the silent and you just feel like you're part of nature, fishing or whatever. 20 so hours of cruising? 20 hours, yes. Wow. Impressive. It is. Very but then you impressive. go at lower speeds, right? That's definitely not full speed. So if you go at planing speeds, it's a bit more than two hours, maybe. And then you need to charge again. So for us land lovers, uh, what is 35 knots in miles per hour, kilometers per hour, all that? So we have a top speed of 35 knots, and that translates into 40 miles per hour. So it's pretty fast. That's very fast on water. That's yeah. very faster. It feels faster on water than it feels on land. So the boat is also, it's not just EV, but you've designed the hull differently from different materials as well. Talk to me about that. So basically, first, as you say, it's an electric uh, vehicle, which is pretty different just there. And then you have, we have a lot of modularities. You can design the boat the way you like it. 
uh, it comes as a just open bare boat, then we have different modules. So you can opt for a social module like sunbed, sofas, table. You can also opt for diving modules, fishing modules, and you can swap. Like two people can just flip up those models, change, and then put them back on. So you can have lots of modules if you want to, or just take them off and have lots of friends uh, on the back. So it depends on how you want to use it. And that also entails that you only need one boat, right? You don't need a boat for fishing, <laughs> and for water sport, and then for social events. So, so that's great from that perspective. But also if you look at the hull, so we can make the hull out of flax fibers. I mean, flax as a garment, right? That's your yes. summer suit. So we can make it out of flax fiber. We use a green epoxy that is 40% uh, organic. We use PET, so basically the same material you have in recyclable bottles. We use that as distancing material. We use cork instead of teak. So we try to strive towards having a fully sustainable boat. Um, so that's one thing. And also we make it in terms of manufacturing in a sustainable process. So, so we look at it from a very wide perspective in terms of sustainability. Uh, also, I mean, we don't emit any noise or CO2 right. when we're out uh, in the nature. So right. you have that as well, right? But then I need to talk about software here because I, I, I think know, that- I know. I'm going to ask you about that I'm, because I'm excited about that. Because, I mean, if you buy a Tesla, as you talked about, you bought a Tesla, then you buy some additional capability. It's yeah. about the self-driving. It's about the smarts of the car. It's about sitting back and watching a movie on the big screen. Yeah. What else is new that you've designed into the boat? So basically, the boat is always connected. 24-7, we're downloading minimum 150 data points per second from each boat. Then we can also add uh, additional sensors to download even more information about environment uh, and, and water quality. So just in terms of how the boat acts, I mean, state of charge, whether the pumps are going... Uh, how much range you have left, where the boat is, etc. We download all of that all the time. So we can, you can start uh, your boat with a smartwatch or with your cell phone, or I can even start it remotely from here in Sweden if you want me to. If you forgot your key, you know, you, wow. uh, you don't have any battery on your uh, watch and you just dropped your uh, iPhone overboard. And you also add a lot of safety to this. So, so this watch, for example, if when I, when I get close to the boat, it feels that I'm... Uh, approaching and then it goes into standby mode so i just push a button and then it starts so very much like a modern car and if i fall overboard god forbid uh, then the boat can feel that i'm overboard and it stops so there's lots of safety you know added into this as well so with my kids we can put a similar kind of safety measures on their uh, life jackets uh, so th- there's there's lots of things you can do just because it's connected and, and then on top of that i mean uh, we have autopilot, we have geofencing. So it's it's basically impossible to steal the boat. There's no outboard oh, wow. motor. You automatically turn it off if it leaves the geofence? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Wow. And we can always <laughs> see where it is, right? So so all of that is to say that the boat is really smart. It's always connected. So so you can interact with the boat in another way than, than you have been able to do before with boats in general. Um Pretty and much. if I want to lend it to a friend or a family member or something like that, I can turn it on remotely for them. I can give them access, like give them a virtual key or yeah. something like that, correct? Absolutely. Uh, we yeah. have also customers that want to um, limit speed limits because, as you <laughs> mentioned, I mean, 40 miles per hour is pretty fast on water. So if you are uh, letting your kids borrowing uh, your boat, maybe you don't want them to play around, you know, too fast in some areas and you can actually yeah. just in the software um, maintain that. Nice. How does it sense that you fell overboard? Is that because your smartwatch is with you and it's increasing range from the boat? Yeah. So basically uh, if this goes underwater, so even if I put my hand down on the surface, the boat thinks I'm below water and then it stops. Or if I'm, I think it's 10 meters away from the boat and it also automatically stops. Uh, okay. And then you can put a similar uh, system here on, you know, cell phones or um, fobs or something like that. You can put on other things as well. We're currently looking into developing, uh, we also have cameras on the boat. Uh, so you can also look into, even if you have people on the boat that you don't know, so they're not connected to the boat uh, or uh, bags or something like that, the boat can see if something falls off and then stop due to this. Wow. If you wanted to. Wow. 
I'm a little bit fascinated by the modularity because you do want to use boats for different things. Sometimes maybe you want to tow somebody and they're skiing behind you or they're on some sort of water toy, right? Sometimes you want to just take out the family and we're going to go out into the middle of the water and we're just going to have a picnic, right? <laughs> or, or whatever. And sometimes you just want to get where you're going. Mm -hmm. That's the modularity that you built in there. How extensive is that? Uh, I think you can have 15 different outfits of the boat, uh, which is sort of water sports. And then you have both wakeboarding and, and water skiing. It's great for that, actually, because the boat's quite heavy. Uh, so we have wakeboard hook on it, for example. Uh, then we have uh, social settings, diving settings, etc. So I think it's 15 different uh, types that you can uh, play around with. And then, and then one thing with getting back to the software. So since we update, since the boat's always connected, we do updates over the air entailing that even if you buy a boat now, so for example, later this year, we will come out with auto docking, which yes. is a big thing, uh, you know, if you're a boat owner, because it's tricky to dock the boat sometimes. So that's yes. sort of a hassle that, especially if you come in and you have lots of people on the dock standing, you know, with drinks. <laughs> Everybody's <people>. looking. <laughs> okay, right? So the auto docking feature, I think will be very popular. And then we can just push it out over the air to uh, current owners of the boat. So it's always good to be able to do that also remotely. Wow. Very, very cool. I, I want smart summon so the boat can go where, <laughs> wherever it stays and it comes to me wherever I am. Yeah. What about range anxiety? Um, I have an electric car, so I understand that to some degree. Is that a big deal? I mean, I assume you've driven the boat, you own a boat, you, you, you're, you're playing around with the boat. Uh, talk to me about how that feels. Well, so in short, you don't have to have range anxiety, although you might be late if you play along uh, too much. So basically, since you can go for a couple of hours at planing speed, I mean, that's the normal use case for a boat. You use it once per day, you use it for a couple of hours. Then you can even charge your boat in a normal electrical outlet, the same way you charge your cell phone. You can charge that overnight and the boat will be fully charged. And then, of course, you can do, we also do supercharging but you don't have availability to supercharge wherever you are. So it's great to always been able to charge it. So hence you can charge it everywhere. And when you have a full battery, you can go for planing speeds um, in just over two hours. And if you go at slower speeds, as I mentioned, you can go for more than 20 hours. So, mm -hmm. and of course we have lots of software helping you to plan this and to see if I'm going at this speed, how far will I get? Will I get to my destination? Or do I need to slow yes. down? So the worst thing that can happen is that you'll get late. <laughs> Very good. I hope so. Uh, talk to me about pricing. Boats are crazy expensive. Um, mm -hmm. I was looking at boats with my son the other day and um, there's a price tag. Uh, I'm, I'm in Vancouver, Canada, and I was just looking at some like little fishing boats or something like that. You know, here's 40,000, there's 50,000, there's 80,000. Uh, you get up expensive pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. What kind of price ranges are you in? So our boat comes for 329,000 USD, but then it's turnkey ready. So most often when you're trying to buy a boat, you're like, oh, this sounds great. It's kind of expensive, but that's okay. And then you have to put the outdoor on, you know, the drivetrain doesn't come with a boat. So we <laughs> have great. everything is included. Uh, so you have the boat ready to go. And then it comes at 329,000 USD. And then you can, of course, buy as many modules if you want more. But yeah. Sure, sure. So not cheap, but I mean, marine engines aren't cheap either. Uh, I've no, seen, I've seen, I've I, seen I would call us affordable premium. Yes. Does that makes sense? Yeah. Yes, yes. And I guess you're not burning gas every hour that you're out on the water, which is also no, nice. No, that, that's, that's actually a big thing. So basically, if a, a similar boat, you would, um, I'm not sure exactly how much it costs to fuel up in the US, for example. If you look here um, in Europe, you will fuel a nor, you know, same sized boat would cost you between uh, $500,000 to fuel up. And, you know, electricity, mm -hmm. that's like... 10 to 20 dollars or something like yes. that yes. and you know you don't have any cost for service because you don't have any filters that need to be changed we do all our maintenance on a software level over the air yes. you don't even notice it yes. so you know from that perspective it doesn't cost anything to own or to drive the boat which i think is a big upside but of course but as you mentioned i mean all boats are somewhat expensive uh as a starting point yes no doubt about it now you raise some money um tell me about that well, so uh, we're seeing more demand than we can handle at the moment. So we have a factory in uh, central Stockholm today. 
uh, we can build around 40 boats out of that factory per year. And we see much, much, much more demand than that. Uh, we recently launched in the USA at the Palm Beach um, International Boat Show. And, and we're seeing already now that, you know, we, we cannot match that demand. So the reason why we're raising capital is to put up our second factory. That would also be in Sweden for now. I think the third one might be in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, we've raised... 17 million US uh, just north of that in order to get our second factory up and running that should be fully up and running by the end of this year and then we should be able to produce around 400 boats per year in that factory wow. uh, and, and we need to get that done right because we cannot meet demand at the moment uh, yes. so uh, we're doing this as quickly as we can <laughs> Now, when Elon Musk made the first Teslas, he had a strategy um, and he was going to make some crazy expensive supercar and he was going to use that to fund the development of a car that more people could afford. And he was going to use that to fund the development of a car that almost everybody could afford. Do you have a similar strategy? I think we will in the marine industry see a similar transition that has happened in the automotive industry. Uh, but also, if you look at, you know, that Tesla is still at fairly expensive, and but you have also less premium brands that you can get mm -hmm. for, uh, mm -hmm. you know, much lower prices than that. I think we'll see a similar uh, transition over time here as well. You will see more and more electrical brands. There's very few high performance brands now, as I mentioned, and, and we're clearly leading this field. But I'm sure that in five years or so, I mean, almost every new boat will be electric yes. only, only a boat longer so i mean you will still have combustion engine boats out there for quite some time but i mean the new ones will definitely be all electric in a few years time already, sure. already now in in europe you're seeing uh, amsterdam will be fully fossil free in 2025 so already today wow. you cannot put a combustion engine boat in amsterdam norway just came out a few weeks back that the norwegian fjords will be fully fossil free in 2026 uh, and, and this is happening now. So lots of lakes and rivers in Europe, you're banning combustion engine. And, and um, we're seeing that there are actually cases in the US where you've started to do this now as well. So I think that this is this is a transition that will be speeding up now. I think we will see that it's quite rapid, actually. That is very, very interesting. Wow. Well, it's been great chatting with you, Jenny. I really do appreciate it. Uh, very cool product. Very cool boat. Uh, love to try it someday when we can travel again. Um, and congratulations on your race. Thank you so much. As soon as you get out of lock gap, I promise you a test drive. No worries. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.